Just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier with the situation here in Israel, a US official just came out with a statement that is absolutely insane. Also, Hamas is now blaming Netanyahu for the failure of the latest round of ceasefire talks. Yeah, this is pretty wild. I'm Justin, and this is The Israel Guys. Welcome to The Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. So as you heard, a U.S. official just made a crazy statement showing, I think, the ignorance of most people, I would say, in regards to this particular subject. So according to this report I found, and I'm not sure exactly who this U.S. official is, but he is a senior official. So he told reporters on Wednesday that, quote, there are things the United States can do to fully account for Israel's security needs should the IDF withdraw from the Philadelphia corridor as part of a hostage release deal. So yes, this particular subject is the Philadelphia corridor, um, which it seems the eyes of the whole world is on right now. This, uh, this official in the US government, he went on to say this, quote, some Israeli ministers say this deal would sacrifice Israel's security. That is just fundamentally untrue. I'd argue that not getting into this deal is more of a threat to Israel's long-term security, and that includes the Philadelphia Corridor. So this, as I said, this is absolutely insane. We have two options here. Either this official, this unnamed US official, has no idea what he's talking about, or he absolutely knows what he's talking about, and he wants to undermine the security of Israel, and he wants to see the death of the state of Israel. Guys, Josh talked about it on his show yesterday, his experience in Gaza. Uh, he was able to go into Gaza recently. They were there, and they saw the Philadelphia Corridor for themselves. This is extremely important for Israel to hold on to, and I I really don't think that most of the world understands what the Philadelphia Corridor actually is. So it's basically a strip of seven miles that is the border between Egypt and Gaza. That is what the eyes of the entire world are on right now. So far in this seven mile strip of land, the IDF has found 200 tunnels. Now with some quick basic math, that's about one tunnel for every 200 feet. That is absolutely insane. And what have these tunnels been used for? Well, for years, Hamas, they, they've used the tunnels to bring in supplies through Egypt. Ever wondered how Hamas was firing rockets into Israel months into the war? Well, it's pretty simple, actually, because they were getting their supplies from their terror leader from Iran straight through Egypt using the tunnels running under the Philadelphia corridor. This is of vital importance for Israel to hold on to. And honestly, at this point, anyone who is calling for Israel to pull out of Gaza, in particular the Philadelphia corridor, as part of some hostage ceasefire deal, either they're so disconnected from reality that they should not be talking about it, or they just plain and simple want the death of the state of Israel. Guys, we're going to talk about other craziness that is happening here in Israel in just one second. But first, Israel's valiant soldiers put everything on the line to defend God's people and the free world from evil. Many have come home with severe injuries that have changed their lives forever. The Malkiel's family story shows the profound impact of your support for Israel's soldiers. Avi, who was severely injured while bravely fighting in Gaza, he is now semi-paralyzed, confined to a specialized wheelchair, and he suffers from neurological damage. His life and his family's has been forever changed. Living in a small caravan in northern Israel, the Malkiels face tremendous financial hardship providing round-the-clock care for Avihu. One urgent need was a special hammock to safely bathe him, which they simply could not afford. And thanks to your donations, the Malkiels were able to buy the hammock, easing their daily struggle. Your generosity provided not just essential equipment, but also a lifeline of comfort, dignity, and hope. But there, unfortunately, there are many more families like, like the Malkiels who need our support. So please, guys, donate today to support wounded soldiers and their families. Your contributions can make all of the difference. Stand 
with our heroes, click the link in the description below to donate to help these brave soldiers of the IDF. So this US official did clarify that the first phase of the deal, quote, does not call for full withdrawal of Israeli forces and never had been. Just from densely populated civilian areas, nothing mentions the Philadelphia Corridor, and a dispute emerged on whether the Philadelphia Corridor counts as a densely populated area. Now, let me get this clear. There should not be any dispute here. There should be no dispute about this. This is not a densely populated area. It's literally a seven-mile strip of land that looks like this. Yeah, crazy open border between Egypt and Gaza. This is not a densely populated area. Anyone who is saying uh, that it is has no idea what they're talking about. You know what else is stupid about this ceasefire deal, the latest round of ceasefire talks? Okay, Hamas is blaming Netanyahu for the failure of the latest round of ceasefire talks. Like, literally, you can't make this uh, this stuff up. Guys, according to Arut Sheva, Hamas released a statement on Wednesday in which it again rejected renewed negotiations on a ceasefire, which they always do, and hostage release deal. And then they blamed Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for the failure of the talks. Insanity. Hamas accused Netanyahu of seeking to thwart an agreement by insisting that Israel will not withdraw from the Philadelphia corridor in southern Gaza. They said this, Quote, we warn against falling into Netanyahu's traps and tricks as he uses negotiations to prolong the aggression against our people. Now, before people start getting all up in arms and stuff and saying, like, why why can't the IDF just withdraw, uh, withdraw out of Gaza? Why can't they withdraw from the Philadelphia corridor? Or saying things like Candace Owens does. It's simple. Israel just needs to stop bombing Gaza. It's completely ridiculous to say, oh, well, you know, this is happening because of Hamas. Let's be very clear. It is happening because the Israeli government will not stop bombing them. Let's just take a step back for a second and think about this logically. It's re it's really simple, actually. This is a terrorist group we're talking about, people. Terrorists. Yes, this is the same group that murdered 1,200 Israelis 11 months ago and took 250 hostages, and then just this past weekend executed six hostages in cold blood. These are the same terrorists that we are negotiating with right now, Guys, why is the world calling to undermine Israel's security and uh, trying to get them to pull out of the Philadelphia corridor? Why is the world instead not pressuring Hamas to surrender? This is a war that is very clear. It's a it's a war that is very black and white. And for some odd reason, the world is seeing it as gray. This is a very clear right and wrong here. One side is evil and wants nothing less than the entire extermination of the state of Israel. And the other side is a moral country that is defending itself and the free world from evil. It's really quite simple when you look at it like this. Guys, I want to end the show on a more positive note. We have exciting stuff here happening here in Harbracha, here at Hayovel. The uh, harvest season is officially upon us. Just started last week. More than 30 volunteers arrived the other day. Um, I want to show you a video from the first day of harvest. I think you'll like this. So you might be wondering, why are we sitting against a trailer? I am wondering that. And you might be wondering, why are we up at 7 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> We're never up sitting at 7 o'clock. against a trailer. That's because today is a very special day. Today is the first day of harvest 2024. <laughs> We are picking grapes for the first time this year with this harvest crew, and it's going phenomenal. Do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, we're starting off in Migdalim this year. Migdalim. Um, that's in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a very um, nice town. It's actually in Shamron, Israel, wow. yes, to be more Samaria. specific. Well, and um, West Bank. yeah, picking grapes here in this new vineyard that's only been around for a few years. A few years. And uh, we picked it for the first time last year, second time picked this field so we're having a we're having a blast and the grapes look beautiful come come, come, see the grapes. come and see come here camera it's amazing 
fruit. Right here, guys, check that out. These grapes were talked about by the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Jeremiah, the prophet Amos. Many of the prophets talked about these specific grapes, very grapes we're doing right here. Should we have our first grape of the season? Yeah. First grape of the year right here. First test, ready? Here we go. Phenomenal. Prophecy tastes good, people. Come to Israel, experience prophecy. Let's go. Mm -hmm. We should probably get to work. Yeah. Yeah, we do work. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Guys, in conclusion, we're going to keep saying this until the end of the war because it is so important. The success of this war, Joshua said it yesterday, lies completely in the corridor, the Philadelphia cor corridor, allowing Israel to cut off resupply of arms to Hamas. It is so simple, guys. Israel is keeping supplies from going into Hamas. They're strangling the terrorist organization of Hamas. And this is the fastest, the only way, the best way to get the hostages home soon. Guys, don't forget to donate to support the wounded soldiers of the IDF. Uh, these brave soldiers have sacrificed so much for Israel. Please do your part and donate to help them today. As always, stop listening to the lies and propaganda and connect with the truth of what is happening here in Israel. We'll be back soon here at the Israel Guys.